Hey guys, Palstron here. And today let's talk about my Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder featuring Iron Reflexes. Poisonous Concoction is a unarmed ranged attack that throws your flasks at enemies. It scales extremely well because it is able to overlap its projectiles quite easily, while being poison and taking little downsides from both greater multiple projectiles and greater volume. This version focuses on a bunch of reduced damage layers, making it possible to face tank some of the scariest bosses in the game with a low life pool. Iron Reflexes basically switches from your playstyle from evasion and hoping you don't get one shot to being able to actually take physical hits, with the new armor formula making it possible to outright ignore most physical damage with only some of the biggest hits even being visible on your life bar. We complement that physical damage reduction with the Divine Flesh Keystone, which combats armor's weakness of elemental and chaos damage by stacking maximum chaos resistance through the Born of Chaos Notable on small cluster jewels. We supplement that with up to 75% block, 100% spell suppression, ailment immunity, and molten shell to become extremely tanky and enable a very cozy and safe playstyle throughout the whole game. The damage scaling during leveling is outrageous, only falling off once you are somewhere in later yellow or red maps, which can be negated by some clever gearing, which I dedicated a section to later in the video. With that being said, let's get into the build portion of the video. Alright, so it is currently the end of day 5 of the league, and we just did 4 out of 5 invitations. That includes the Hidden with all the Breach Lords, uh, as you probably saw in the footage. And even though we still have to clear the Feared, um, the build is now at a point where it's at least functioning, and um, I'm happy to release it. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will upgrade it a lot further. Uh, I might as well. I might do another update video. I'm not sure yet. But it is at a point where I can make a full guide and explain everything that you need to know. Um, so let's first go into the skill itself and the playstyle. The skill we're using is called Poisonous Concoction, and this is an unarmed attack, so you cannot have any weapons at all. You cannot also not have an offhand weapon. You can, however, have a shield. Now, if we look over the gem, it has a ton of added flat chaos damage. It has innate chance to poison. It has a little bit AoE from the quality. And then it has two very important lines at the end here. One of them is consumes two charges from one life flask if possible, and added chaos damage equal to 9% of flasks recovery amount if charges were consumed. So all this means is that whenever you attack with this, uh, with Poisonous Concoction, it tries to remove two of your life flask charges. You can see here you have 45 charges in total and they reach them because you're Pathfinder. Um, basically, it, pr it tries to remove those. And if there are any to remove, you get a, ba a bunch of extra damage. And let's talk about how that damage actually scales because there is a lot of confusion about the wording here. Now, the last line here is a little bit ominous. Added chaos damage equal to 10% of flask recovery amount if charges were consumed. A lot of people were extremely confused about does increased life recovery from flask work? Well, Mark GGG confirmed that it does not indeed. The only thing that matters is the recovers and the amount afterwards. So for example, if we went here and we did a little bit of math, we, it's at 10% of the life recovery. It's 4752 times 0 0.1. And we have another 457 flat added chaos damage if it is able to remove life flash charges. Now, what is special about this skill is the way it works with additional projectiles. Now, it actually shotguns. So, for example, if we put GMP in here, theoretically, all of these could damage the same enemy, basically times fiving your damage. Now, we can uh, enhance this further by using Greater Volley on top, and now you have nine projectiles. And with Greater Volley, the way it lines up is it falls a lot more in line, so it's a lot easier to overlap, and against big enemies uh, and against the big bosses, these will actually all hit the same target. Now you might ask, why is that so important? Because it, while it does look impressive, we already had a concoction last league and it completely failed. And it also could overlap those projectiles. Well, the reason it matters this time around is because we're poison. So getting, we are not getting the less projectile damage from either greater multiple proje projectiles or greater volley, which is why this skill is so much better at stacking projectiles than, for example, explosive concoction was last league. Because the only things you could really do with explosive concoction were hit builds, where this last multiplier would be rough, you would probably only run volley, or you would be ignite, and ignite overlaps don't matter because only one 
ignite actually sticks on an enemy. So these overlapping mechanisms that are basically three from your support gems uh, make this skill incredibly situated in terms of damage scaling. But now let's look at how this playstyle actually looks like. Now the way this build will play out in a map, for example, is you press Blood Rage once and then you just get going. Now um, here we have Shield Charge, so we can ju just Shield Charge for packs. Now we see down here we have Plague Bearer, right? And you will see a little counter up here. Uh, and once it gets to a million, that's my max right now, it uh, gets a different icon. Now you can press it, and now you can just run through enemies, and they die to this green-ish damage over time. Um, so that's basically going to be your playstyle. You're going to hit some enemies until it's refilled. Now this is... Uh, these enemies don't have much HP, so we're not. it's going to take a little, but usually you throw like two bottles and you're back to normal and you do this over and over. Now you can also pair this with Withering Step. The problem in the Iron, um, in the Iron Reflexes version is that I actually really like having Molten Shell on my left click and whenever I Molten Shell, the Withering Step kind of disappears. So look if you actually want to do Withering Step because it's very nice for this kind of Plague Burr playstyle. Uh, I, I opted not to use it, but you definitely can. Now let's talk about defenses of this build. This build is incredibly tanky. And I just want to tell you that if you're looking at the HP here, you might be confused. Uh, why am I talking about defenses? But this build works with a ton of different layers of damage reduction. So let's talk about all of them. Our number one at the heart of our damage reduction is the physical damage reduction, which comes from iron reflexes. Converts all evasion rating to armor. Dexterity provides no bonus to evasion rating. So basically that means instead of going into an evasive play style where basically you don't get hit for a lot of times and then you get hit really hard, making you susceptible to one shots, we're opting to negate that damage down to a very, very tiny number. Um, so if we go into PUB here, for example, currently I have 43,015 armor, which isn't optimal, right? In, a, in an optimal setup, you want at least 50,000 armor to actually fully activate your Molten Shell, which we're going to talk about in detail as well. But first up, this strictly means that we have a ton of physical damage reduction, 87% here. And if we, for example, type in a massive enemy hit of 8,000, we would still be at a 52 physical damage reduction. Basically, even against big slams, we're cutting the damage in half. Now, this is easily upgradable to 60 or even 70% damage reduction against big hits right here. Uh, you would just have to get better bases. Most of my bases are very bad. They're missing like hundreds and hundreds of evasion or armor. Um, so yeah, that's basically the first thing uh, that you want to fix. But uh, physical damage mostly does nothing to us. So second line of defense is what do we do against, against elemental and chaos damage? Well, there's two ways to make it, mitigate. Number one is just stacking life and life. But the problem is, especially since our life uh, flasks are actually such a vital part of our recovery and are extremely strong on this build, uh, the more life we have, the less efficient our life flasks get because they're not percentage-based, they're flat-based, right? So having a low amount of HP while having a ton of damage reduction is actually very, very good for us. So enter Divine Flesh. Now, Divine Flesh basically makes it so all damage taken bypasses energy shield, basically rendering your energy shield useless. And then it says 50% of elemental damage taken as chaos damage, and you get plus five to maximum chaos resistance. So basically what this keystone allows you, allows you to do is stack chaos resistance to take less elemental damage. So in the process, you are stacking Chaos Res, making you less weak against Chaos damage, which is one of our weaknesses if we're just stacking armor and uh, going for physical damage reduction. But this keystone also means that elemental damage gets kind of covered in at, at the same time. And we're combining this with two times Born of Chaos uh, small cluster jewels to get our maximum Chaos Res to actually 86%. Now, what this means for our defenses is let's uh, disable uh, Molten Shell for a second so we can actually see our max hit here. Uh, maximum hit taken, 37,000 against physical damage and 41,000 against elemental and 34,000 against chaos. Now, let's just see how good this keystone actually is. Let's disable it for a second. Well, if we disable it, we were actually only able to take half the damage that we would be able to. So that just gets to show you how crazy this keystone is in kind of... Uh, kind of shoring up your weaknesses when you're an armor character against elemental and chaos damage. Our next defensive layer is a block. Since we are not evasion, we're converting all of our evasion to um, basically armor. 
we still want some kind of avoidance, right? And uh, the easiest way to do this, since we can use a shield anyways, we can't use any weapons, we might as well, right? We have 35% chance to block on shields. They just got buffed. You can get up to 16% chance to block in the suffix, meaning you could get way better shields. You could actually get kept. We're not kept right now. We're in a leak starting scenario. We're at 67%, right? Um, so we can get the block notes here, block notes here, and you could theoretically also go for versatile combatant. I personally don't love versatile combatant in this build because we're already so well set up against spells. We have uh, almost 100% spell suppression, all the other damage reductions. I don't see it necessary, but it is a very good tool against certain bosses. For example, against feared, you definitely want to do it. Uh, against hidden, you definitely want to do it, which we actually did respec. Uh, so in that case, just respec this node, for example, for versatile combatant. Now, last defensive setup is a molten shell. This is a guard skill. We're not using steel skin or a mortal call uh, molten shell is actually quite insane so what this does is basically it scales off of your armor and it gives you a damage shield for a short duration now um basically then it goes on cooldown and then you can press it again and it will be up again so this is just up again and again and again it, and it absorbs a ton of damage this also even more gets you a little bit stronger against elemental damage and against chaos damage because you're already well set up against physical damage but uh yeah this this can absorb all types of damage so this is just a very very big payoff for armor characters in general and one more reason to go with Iron Reflexes. Now at the end, let's also talk about Pantheons real quick here. I went for Soul of Lunaris here. This gives a physical damage reduction for each nearby enemy, some movement speed, very good for mapping. You also get 10% chance to avoid projectiles, but one of the big ones is reduced elemental damage taken if you've been hit recently, even more negation of el elemental damage, which is a huge problem, right, uh, for armor builds. Usually, this also stacks with the 6% reduced elemental damage taken from the Pathfinder, so very, very nice. And at the end, you also get avoid projectiles that have change chained, which is very nice because we're running Herald of Agony, giving us like a minion that enemies could chain onto us, but no, they can't. So that's very, very nice for... for uh, leveling it for for mapping overall and then for the small ones it's a little bit weird right so against bosses i would definitely tell you to get go with solo versus lava life flask gain three charges every three seconds if you haven't used the life flask recently which happens quite a bit right we're very tanky we have a lot of sustain so we don't really need to press our life flask that often so if you're throwing a lot right and you're in a longer fight like an invitation this helps out a ton definitely switch to this for mapping itself um i would say you can go for either soul of ralakesh to kind of mitigate bleed a little bit uh, or you can go for soul of tukuhama but mostly i really like the cozy feeling of soul of rislafa next up let's talk about our ascendancy we are a pathfinder and pathfinder has a lot of good things for this build uh, number one we get chaos skills have 30 percent increased area of effect which gives you even more overlaps for your flask giving you more single target damage better clear potential it's just awesome overall it also gives you 15 percent more chaos damage with attack skills straight up 15% more damage. The small notes here also give you flask effect, all the flask related stuff basically. So very, very good. Uh, and then you have also have master toxicist. This gives you, uh, when you kill a poisoned enemy during any flask effect, nearby enemies are poisoned, kind of poison prolif, which honestly usually wouldn't be that good because it only proliferates the biggest poison on an enemy. So builds that try to stack a ton of poisons, this is not as efficient in, but in the way that you're going through a map, which is basically just throw once, boom, boom, boom. Um, the proliferation actually really matters and it definitely helps your clear. Now, this also gives you 20% chance to deal 100% more damage. On average, that's a 20% more damage. You also get uh, some good movement speed, attack speed. Now, then we have Nature's Boon, uh, which has three lines here. Number one, 6% uh, reduced elemental damage taken. Huge. Flask gain free charges every three seconds. Makes it very, very easy to sustain our flash charges whenever we're throwing. Um, even in longer fights, it's pretty good. You can, like I said, uh, kind of substitute it with Soul vs. Lava. But if you're not a Pathfinder, you definitely have to take this wheel here, plus the Flask Mastery. For example, if you're an Occultist, definitely take this wheel. Otherwise, it could get a little bit awkward, especially in longer fights. And it also gives us 20% chance for Flasks you, you use to not consume charges. Nice little bit up on top. So overall, Pathfinder just an extremely well-rounded ascendancy. And especially getting the AoE means we don't have to go for Carcass Check, which is very good for this build because Carcass Check doesn't offer as much armor as some of the other chests would. Next up, let's go with the items. Now, number one, the only unique we're using, which is Cherubim's Maleficence. I just want to make clear that this is not 
any best in slot or something. I just chose it because I got a cheap with plus two level of socketed projectile gems. So basically, with the way the new currencies work, you can actually really, really easily make yourself a corrupted six link. Uh, and you do that with um, tainted uh, jeweler orbs and tainted fusings. There's a lot of guides out on YouTube already about that. So definitely check that out. If you want to make a cheap plus two chest, the plus two is very important because um, the way uh, poisonous concoction scales is very similar to a spell skill. So number one, that. Number two, um, Cherubims, it has a ton of armor and evasion, and evasion gets converted to armor. So this is like a good 2,500 armor. It has increased chaos damage. It has life. It's perfectly fine. Also, the increased total recovery uh, per second from life leech is actually quite important because usually that doesn't really matter because you can only leech up to your leech cap anyways, and it doesn't go over, right? And you, in a hit build, you, you reach that very easily. But since we're damaged over time and only a, a small part of our damage is actually hit damage, this helps us lead, uh, reach the leech cap. So um, definitely watch out if you can snag a Jerobims. But other alternatives with if you get them with plus two would be, for example, the Resso's Defiance. Uh, and also, uh, obviously, as always, a, a Carcass Jack gives you even more overlaps. It's not as good in the armor department because it only has 1,100 that gets converted to armor. But it's still very, very good. I also want to point out that it doesn't have to be plus two level of socketed projectile uh, skill gems. It also can be plus two to socketed AoE gems because um, Poisonous Concoction has both tags. Now, as for the shield, basically we're looking for something that has a ton of life. And then on top of that has a good chance to block, to kind of cap our block. We're not capped, but if you have a max roll and maybe a better base, you can definitely get there. Now, uh, we also want chance to suppress spell damage if you can on top. This alleviates a lot of, um, of gearing problems because you can't get it everywhere and usually you don't get as much as on a shield. So it can be a little bit awkward. But if you want a perfect shield, you definitely want to look out for recover 5% life on block. This basically makes you unkillable in your small hits. Whenever something hits you and you block, you shoot up your life. Um, so yeah, definitely look out for that mod if you want a really juicy shield. And then as for the helmet here, now um, very important, try and get the 24% increased AoE for Poison's Concoction Enchant. I know it's going to be rough, right? People are catching on to this skill. Uh, maybe you only get the 16%. It's still better than nothing, right? Lion Pelt would the, be the most optimal. But the second and third best are Sinner Tricorn or Ursin Pelt. These are the best three evasion bases. Um, and uh, basically what you want to roll on it, you're going to use uh, Essences. You're going to use uh, Screaming Essences of Greed. They give you a, a little bit of life, right? They, they basically guarantee you the life roll. And then you're looking for Resistances, um, chance to suppress spell damage, accuracy, and you always want to have one suffix open for this craft here that you get from uh, from uh, Syndicate, which is increased duration of ailments you inflict while focused. Now, all that focus means is basically if I equip this item, I get this focus button here, and whenever I press it, I get the effect from whatever the focus tells us it is. So it's kind of a cooldown placeholder, and then it goes after it that it goes on cooldown. And after the cooldown is up, you press it again. You basically do this whenever you're at like a boss or I don't know, a, a very heavy rare, whatever. Um, but it helps you a out a ton. It When you press it, it gives you like 60, 70% more damage. So against tough enemies, this uh, mod helps you out a lot. One more important uh, piece of gear is get yourself a ring with despair on hit. Now you can substitute this right now with a Witchfire Brew, which definitely is fine, right? But you will have to sacrifice one of your flask slots, which is not optimal. And also only enemies around you get despair. So against some enemies, when you're not as tanky, right? Maybe you don't have your Divine Flesh yet, right? It's pretty expensive right now. Um, you, If you're not near enemies, they actually don't get the debuff. And this is a huge damage increase. So definitely be sure to try to get this but i understand it's kind of hard right now so many people are playing toxic win as well so um yeah everything with despair is is in high demand now the rest of your gear is very interchangeable but i will point out some stats that you're really missing from the passive tree right number one is strength number two is int and number three is accuracy it doesn't really matter where you have what right for example i have a lot of strength on my belt because that's a very easy way to get that i have some int on here I have some accuracy on this ring. I have some increased accuracy on my helmet, right? Uh, I have some accuracy here. 
so it, it's kind of interchangeable, right? Get it wherever you can. It doesn't really matter. Also for the Emmy, it would be nice if you could get some Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. And also the best base would be an Agate Amulet because it has Strength and Int. So if you get that, even better. Also a stat that you want to look out for is Chaos Res. For example, I kind of kept my Chaos Res with just this ring, which is a Amethyst ring that also has a Chaos Resistance role, right? The rest isn't that good overall, uh, but it's not that hard to cap, right? You already get Chaos Res from here and you get Chaos Res from up here. So it's it's not that bad, but still look out that you get some. I also have a Chaos Res Implicit here. So overall, if you get like 70% on your gear, you're good to go. Next up, let's go over flasks. The most important one is that you have a saturated divine last flask, life flask. The suffix isn't really that important. I didn't get anything good here. Uh, but basically, this gives you increased amount recovered, which increases your damage because this is the life flask that uh, the flash charges will be uh, consumed from. And depending on how much this recovers, you get extra damage, right? So definitely go for this. Um, now, uh, you obviously can also press your life flask. You have a lot of regen with uh, a lot of uh, flash charges gained with Pathfinder. So don't be scared to also press it. It's not only for um, consume from your uh, uh, poisonous concoction. You can also press it. There is no problem with that, right? Sometimes you get in a pickle, just press it. Uh, now, number two, very important, obviously a quick silver flask. I have a quick silver flask of the Lynx, which is basically in increased movement speed. Um, nothing really to see here. I definitely should put on some glass blowers bubble as soon as I can. Uh, then we also have a granite and a jade flask. Now, uh, basically you would want one of them to have a increased evasion rating during flask effect roll and one of them to have a increased armor uh, during flask effect roll. So this gives you a ton of armor because both of these are like the jade flask is going to be completely converted by iron reflexes. Um, and yeah, this is very, very huge for the build, giving you a lot of your physical defenses. And at the end, we also have a sulfur flask. This is basically just, we're kind of starved on increased damage. And that gives us exactly that while also giving us some regen from the, while we're standing on the consecrated ground, which we're a tank build. So we can actually make use of that quite well, right? We're just going to stand there and cast. We're going to tank everything and just region up like crazy. Now, a small tip here at the end of the item section is get yourself a second life flask, very similar to your first one. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? But at least that you have something for invitations or something like Cyrus, uh, extended boss fights, so you don't run out of life flasks because usually you wouldn't run out, but sometimes you actually have to press them, right? You're in danger. You have to recover life that maybe has to be more than just your leech, right? because you have leech, but sometimes that's not enough, right? So you have like a panic flask. So definitely in that case, replace your sulfur flask and go for a dual life flask setup. This will make your life so much easier. And especially if you're somebody who isn't perfect at um, timing their flask or they like hectic spam their flask, uh, this will give you a lot of options. As for gems, our main setup uh, in our poisonous concoction, our support gems are number one life tap. This is super important. Uh, you can cover your mana with a mana flask if you want to. You can cover your mana with life leech here or mana gained on hit, whatever you want. But for me, just having the convenience to spam these as much as I want is huge, especially in boss fights, especially when everything is very hectic. You don't want to be in a situation where uh, something like one of your projectiles doesn't connect, you have no leech, and now you're standing there, and this skill costs like 45 mana, right? So you have to regen it up normally, but you're not a character that has any mana region, so you're kind of screwed, right? So this just alleviates all of that. Now you lose unbound ailments for that, so you lose quite a bit of duration. Overall, this comes out to like 10% less damage or something. Sure, right? But it is still just worth the convenience. I can just tell you, even if you're like reluctant to try this, Still try it out. I can guarantee you, you're going to love this playstyle a lot more. It also means you don't have to uh, waste your one of your flask slots or waste a lot of passive points uh, here to get mana recovery elsewhere. Then we have both GMP and Greater Volley. Now, if you're already further than I am in, in terms of currency, you already have your Dying Sun as well, uh, or you have your Awakened Gems, you can reconsider actually cutting one of these if you want to, because on top of that, Dying Sun would give you 11 projectiles, which is kind of overkill. At that point, you might think about um, removing one of these, but that's completely up to you, right? Um, right now, they're absolute killer and then you also have void manipulation and vicious projectiles obviously you would want to have them uh, with quality or you want would want to have the awakened versions of them then we have our wither setup 
it's basically just spell totem, multiple totems, wither. You can also um, enhance this with increased duration or faster casting. I didn't really have the gems for it. Then two of our movement speed setups. Number one is the shield charge with faster attacks. This is how we get around maps normally. Um, Flame Dash is just there to go over hurdles because shield charge doesn't cover that. And then we have Plague Bearer, which is an all-star in this build. As I showed you, it's a lot of your clear speed, and we enhance that with increased AoE. Now, once again, if you already have an Empower, if you're further in the game, definitely go for an Empower because this is one of the only ways to actually scale the Plague Bearer. Then we have our Aura setup. Now, our two most important Auras are Determination and Purity of Elements. Depending on how much uh, flat armor you have, Grace might actually be better than Determination, so definitely check that out. It really depends. Um, and Purity of Elements is just so convenient. As I already told you, we need like Int, we need Strength, we need Accuracy on gear. So just having the 34 Aures is very convenient for gearing, especially at the start of a league. And giving you complete immunity to ailments is just so huge. That's not only Freeze, Chill, Shock, and Ignite. That's also if you're doing Simulacrum, Sap, Brittle, and Scorch. So... Overall, just such a powerhouse at the moment. I would never, ever even consider replacing this. Uh, then we also have Herald of Agony. We're running Div Divergent Herald of Agony. Now, but depending on your gear, you might not need the extra chance to poison. Definitely check that out. But Divergent basically just means that you get 40% chance to poison instead of 20. And then at the end, we also have Precision. This is not fully leveled. This is just so we can cover the, uh, the little bit of um, accuracy that we're missing. If you have more accuracy on gear, you can completely scrap that or convert it into a Vitality or do whatever. Then we have our left mouse button, which is going to be Molten Shell. Basically, you just have it here on your left. Uh, that's the Valve one. The left mo uh, left uh, mouse button here. And then the Valve Molten Shell is more of a oh shit button. If something comes onto you, you just press it and you're basically invulnerable. Definitely be sure to uh, keep on this uh, to the correct uh, bindings that you can actually press it fast if you need to. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a very comfy playstyle, so you don't have to cast it all the time. And then Blood Rage, uh, obviously, you just press it once at the start of a map. It's going to give you a lot of attack speed, a lot of frenzy charges, and yeah. All right, so we have a pretty normal Ranger start here. Uh, you go through the Heart of Oak Life up there. You definitely want to grab Charisma. This will make it possible for you to run all the auras I mentioned in the gem section. Uh, now, Wasting and this whole part up here only gets important once you have Divine Flesh because then this also helps you out a ton. And since you now have the Chaos Mastery, you can grab the plus one to Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier per four Chaos Res. We're capped on Chaos Res at 86, which means we're going to get what? 21% chaos.multi for one point. Absolutely nuts. Uh, but before you have that, you don't really have to go up here at all. So stop here. You definitely want to grab charisma anyways, but then don't go up here. We stop at blood siphon. This helps with, helps with our strength later. And um, yeah, definitely go down here to swift venoms. Very, very important. Uh, a lot of the things that we do while leveling, like pathing up here, taking these damage nodes, will be once again in the POB. Uh, this is just the final version, right? Uh, we also grab this cluster here. Now, in one of them, we have the increased poison duration. And in one of them, we have the recover 3% of life on killing a poisoned enemy, which helps out a lot. You can also go for the Plague Bearer has 20% increased maximum Plague value. Up to you. Uh, I kind of felt like Plague Bearer does enough damage, so we're good. I'd rather have the life on killing a poisoned enemy. Um, but uh, you can also replace the poison duration just see whatever your playstyle uh, basically allows, right? Uh, very important, take this one point here just for the little bit of evasion and also the 10% chance to gain phasing for four seconds on kill. The rest is kind of worth it, but we we're very starved on points, right? So just take this one so you in map in a mapping situation you basically always have phasing right um this is the only spell suppression cluster that we take and um now one thing to mention here is number one we're taking the spell suppression mastery that gives you plus 10 percent chance to suppress suppress spell damage if your boots helmet and gloves have evasion so definitely check if this you're actually eligible for this one uh check if it actually shows up on your defense page but this is huge for one point now, uh, Entrench is kind of big in the sense that Life Flasks gain free charges when you suppress spell damage, which, for example, in Invitations, when you, if you looked at the intro in the Xoth, uh, in the Breach fight, right, so many spell projectiles flying at you, each, each and every one of them gives your Life Flasks charges again, so you can just spam and you have so much defenses. This is very, very good in some um, niche case scenarios, right? We're just going for life wherever we can. Um, we have to go up here and take the Glorious Vanity here. And um, basically, EE is going to be 
um, replaced by divine flesh here. Very important to notice that you need a Xibaqua. Otherwise, this is not going to be divine flesh. Xibaqua, basically bathed in blood, blah, 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 by the name of Xibaqua. Then you know you have the right one. Um, then you grab Graceful Assault, which is huge. This gives us Onslaught on Kill. It gives us Onslaught Effect. Also, this small note here gives us Onslaught Effect. It's also Evasion and Armor. It fits perfectly into the build. And then you path down to kind of the Block Armor region. So first up here is where you're going to get your uh, complete cluster setup. Now, number one, the large cluster. The best setup is Touch of Cruelty, Unholy Grace, and Unwaveringly Evil. Unwaveringly Evil is huge because it makes you stun immune while you're casting your Poisonous Concoction. And since we're very tanky, we're going to face tank a lot, right? So we're going to stand still and cast. And this is perfect because while we're doing that, we cannot be stunned. Uh, now, usually you won't get stunned all that much anyway because we take almost no damage. But uh, in hard boss fights, it can happen. So this helps out a ton. Now, one of the most important things to note here is that since the passive tree rework, a lot of increased damage sources have been removed from the tree. So I just want to tell you that a large cluster jewel and two mediums go a long way in combating that deficiency this patch. A lot of builds are struggling because they're not realizing why they have no damage. Then they go in POB and they're completely surprised why this one node gives them like 7% more damage. It's because they removed a lot of just... I don't know, 20% there, 20% there. They replaced it with dot multi. And now everybody has too much dot multi and not enough increased damage. All of these cluster jewels definitely help you combating that. But yeah, you also want Unholy Grace. This also gives you increased attack and cast speed, which is nice. Cast speed also helps your wither totems cast faster. So faster stacks. And Touch of Cruelty is very nice. It basically makes it so enemies take more damage if they're hindered. And your chaos skills can hinder, which means they get slower. Now, as for the medium cluster jewels, my medium cluster jewels are actually not perfectly set up because I'm just, I don't, I don't have the currency to get the perfect ones. The perfect cluster jewels, I'm just going to mention it here, would be flow of life and then circling oblivion or wasting affliction. Wasting affliction is the one that gives 20% increased damage and 5% faster poison. Um, but basically either a mix or match, you definitely want flow of life on both of your jewels. This this note is huge, but I have to kind of, uh, I don't know, swindle around with Students of Decay. It's not terrible, right? It gives you Chaos Res and Dot, and uh, this one's kind of bad, right? Dot Multi, Chaos Res against damage over time. Basically, uh, just filler, right? Just so you have a little bit more just damage nodes to take, right? And then your small cluster setup is going to consist of two small cluster jewels with Born of Chaos as the notable, and then you want it to be two passives, so you don't have to take three points to get to the notable. It's all about the notable. The small one also gives you Chaos Res, right? It's nice. Maybe you can get out some strength, maybe some res, right? But it's mostly about Born of Chaos. This basically raises your max Chaos Res, which does not only increase your defenses against Chaos Damage, but since we are Divine Flesh, it also increases the defenses against all elemental damage. Now, something to mention here real quickly is that our Leech comes from a Anoint here, which is going to be Vitality Void. This does cost a Golden Oil and a Silver Oil, but you don't have to take it if you can't afford it right now. Or maybe you have a shitty amulet, right? And you don't want to put it on a shitty amulet. Of course, you can also get Clever Thief. These um, oils basically cost nothing. All that will happen is that this leech is a little bit more reliable and you get 15% of max total leech. So your 20% your cap will move up a little so you can regen more per second, which is going to be insane later on. But you do, it, it is not high priority uh, just get Clever Thief for now. Now, next up, going into the block region, we're taking Deflection. We're taking Testudo. We're taking Retaliation. Now, if you're actually overcapped on block, um, you can take the Block Mastery with plus two maximum chance to block attack damage. Usually, it won't be necessary. Getting to 75 is fine. Then you also have the Shield Mastery here, which is huge. It is plus one chance to block attack damage per 5% chance to block on equipped shield. For example, we have 35% chance to block here. So this one node gives us 7%. If you reach 40%, which is possible, you can even go over 40, then this will even give you 8%. So it will help you cap your block. Other than that, than that, take obviously the jewel here once you have something good going. Golem's blood, always nice. And then uh, we're closing out here on iron reflexes. All right, so next up for the leveling section. Now, one thing I wanna preface here is that this skill is incredible at leveling. 
Uh, I don't think I've ever had a leveling experience like this at a leak start. Uh, I can definitely tell you that during the first 70 to 80 levels, you're going to love this skill. Afterwards, you will have to make some adjustments to your gear. But uh, for an entry into a league, this is huge. And I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, now, one of the things I want to point out here is that when you import uh, the POB right now, the masteries are kind of bugged. So they can be not shown. Uh, in the notes section here, I will have them all listed so you know what you have to take. And on top of that, let's go through how your first 12 levels will look like. Basically, you're just taking Caustic Arrow and you're going to get to level 12 where you get the Concoction. But um, if you want to know how to how the support gems are going to look like for the first 12 levels, I will also put in here. We're going to be talking about the Concoction, with the Poisonous Concoction, which you're going to get at level 12. Now, the way we're going to start out leveling is through the Projectile, Damage, and Attack Speed Notes. And that's basically just because these give you a lot of damage boost at the start. It's not really about our poison right now. Obviously, proj damage doesn't do anything for your poison, but right now we're very hit-based, and this all scales the caustic arrow, which we're going to use for the first 12 levels. This will make it feel better. Later, we're going to respec into the evasion starting area, which right now does basically nothing, so why would we take it, right? So we go through here, go up there, and the first thing you want to grab, the very first thing, is toxic strikes, so we get the first poison mastery, which is going to be poisons you inflict on non-poisoned enemies, deal 300% increased damage. And this is basically huge, right? At the start, you're not going to stack many poisons. You're going to throw once, move, throw once, move, and your first poison will have 300% increased damage. This will basically make it so even though your poisons are kind of weak, they get a, a huge boost on top of that. And all the rest you're going to do is you're going to path through here to prepare for a Swift Venoms, which we're going to take at level 33. We're also going to take the Poison Duration node. We're going to take the Maximum Life. We're going to take the Accuracy. If you don't need it yet, always look on your character sheet if you need it. You can also take the Accuracy Mastery, which makes it so Dexterity is more effective. And then we path all the way up here to Fatal Toxins, where we then take Recover 3% of life on killing a poisoned enemy. After we're finished with that, we are going to go to the level 55 tree, which basically just extends down there. We get some phasing on kill, which is nice. We get an onslaught on kill, which is very nice traversing areas. And we path all the way down here to get dirty te techniques, but also to set up for some of the block nodes later and also for the cluster jewel later. Up here, we basically path through blood drinker. Uh, we get the increased life region while we're moving, right? Um, and we go through all the increased damage here, get coordination, and stop uh, on top at Trickery. Now definitely make sure that you go up here first, because this actually gives you a bit of int and also strength to kind of shore up those weaknesses. And this area here is more for the end of level 55. But let's go to level 68 next, and this is basically going to look like this. So what has changed here? Basically, we've taken Iron Reflexes at this point. You don't have to yet, but you can. Armor is very efficient at this point. We took Golem's Blood. We took only the block nodes that are offensive because we want to get some damage. And at this point, we're not going to need any huge defensive layers, right? We took some more life. Uh, other than that, what changed? We filled out some of these clusters, right? For some attack speed and duration. And um, basically also something I want to make clear is that at the start, you want to prioritize everything that gives you chance to poison. So you get to 100% as quick as possible, right? Uh, other than that, um, we obviously respect out of this already, right? Took the evasion notes. We still keep the ballistics, even though it, the projectile damage doesn't do anything. Projectile speed is very, very nice for the feel of the skill. So definitely keep this one here. And uh, other than that, we didn't really change anything. As for ascendancies, there is the following priority. Basically, first, you're going to take the nature's, uh, nature's reprisal, which gives you AOE, which is very important. Um, definitely take that first. Secondly, you're going to take the Master Toxicist, which gives you uh, proliferation, which is nice while tra traversing through terrain. Um, just throw once, everything proliferates, you're good. It also gives you more damage. Uh, now, as a third one, you can go either way. I went with Nature's Boon. This basically means that you can drop one of your Life Flask, because at the start, you're going to have to run quite a few. Um, and also, Nature's Adrenaline is going to come uh, last. At the end, I also included a no cluster tree. This is basically if you don't have the money yet to buy your cluster jewels. Um, what you can do here is if we're uh, if we're kind of comparing this with the end game tree, the thing that uh, changes is this region here we can't really take, right? There's a lot of increased damage here that we now get through the cluster jewels. And if you do not have a cluster jewel, 
definitely go for all of this increased damage here, all of the increased damage here. Very, very important. Now, one very important leveling detail that you should not neglect is use around three life flasks so you never run out of them. Uh, and you can also use them because at the start, you will not have Pathfinder's region here. So you won't get as many flask charges. Um, it's just very it, also the lower uh, level flasks have less flask charges. So overall, you will need around three of them. So the best setup would be a mana flask since right now you're you're going to have to fix it, uh, your mana with a flask. Then you have free life flasks and one quicksilver flask. And even more important, those free life flasks, update them as often as you can. Always check the vendors. Always pick up life flasks as much as you can. Convert them to a new one, a better one, because these will influence how much damage you deal. If you're still running around with small life flasks in Act 5, you're basically doing half your damage. So don't do that to yourself. Update them frequently, and you're going to have a really good time. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how does this build actually scale? Does it scale well into end game? Where does it drop off? Where does it excel? So let's talk about it. Now, this build excels at the first 80 levels. This build is absolutely insane during leveling. It feels like twink leveling, leveling from level 12 onwards. And everybody who ever tried the skill that I told, just try out the skill has told me the same thing. At level 12, you put on LMP, you're breezing through. At level 38, you put on GMP, plus greater volley, you're absolutely demolishing everything. So the damage fall off of this build, uh, every build has a damage fall off. This build's damage fall off is a little later. It's around about red maps where you have to start scaling a little bit differently because you don't have a weapon to upgrade. Like for example, a toxic rain character has toxic rain. Also a character that usually falls off, uh, falls off uh, late yellow maps, start red, start of red maps, right? Uh, but they usually then they get a expensive bow or they just craft it themselves, right? We have to do it a little bit differently. Now, when you don't have one huge upgrade to get, basically the biggest thing is every small detail counts. So every bit of un and ounce of damage you get is going to matter. But number one thing that you want to get is a cluster jewel setup. Now, the small ones are for later, right? Once you can afford a glorious vanity. Uh, this is merely for defense. But in terms of damage, the large cluster jewel is going to be huge. As well as that, the medium cluster jewels are going to um, supplement that very well. These are a huge source of damage. This, All of this setup here can double your damage. So basically, do not delay buying these jewels. Now, this skill skills very well with levels, just like a spell would. So you kind of have to get your mindset off of that. because um, we do not have a weapon, so we do not scale off of a weapon, but we have all the damage from the gem itself, which is basically the same as a spell would scale, right? And what do you want on a, on a spell? Obviously, you want levels, right? This is the same here. And one of the most important things to realize is the last line here scales with levels. And the breakpoints for those are level 22 and level 25. At level 22, this goes from 9 to 10%, as you can see here. The last line equal to 10% now. And... Uh, once you're at level 25, it would even scale to 11, which for us is kind of out of reach right now, but you can do it with an Emmy, uh, which we're not going to cover here because it's out of our reach right now, but definitely something you can strive for if you're going to uh, put this build, push this build even further. Uh, but basically, yeah, get yourself some uh, levels on your chest or maybe your amulet if you can. Next up, get yourself this craft here as soon as possible. This craft is huge. This is a ton of duration. So you can stack up your poisons way, 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 way longer. And this is just one suffix and one button extra to press. You press it at bosses. You press it at big rares. If you have bad gear, you can press it whenever, right? Um, this will carry you through a lot and also get yourself chaos damage over time wherever you can. Get yourself attack speed if you can. Uh, but that's basically your scaling options. Also do sulfur flask. This shores up kind of what I said about... Um, not having enough increased damage. Uh, but yeah, uh, levels will be the biggest thing, followed by, obviously, all I talked about here with the cluster jewels. Also getting better jewels, right? Right now, my jewels absolutely suck, right? I could get chaos damage over time multiplier. I could get damage with poison. Uh, so that is where your money should go towards if you want to upgrade and kind of scale this build into red maps. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Now, as always, a big shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And um, yeah, absolutely awesome build. Love it. 
uh, cleared most of the content. Uh, we're still gonna, we still have to do feared, so we're gonna see how this goes. Maybe we'll have to actually invest a little bit more. I uh, haven't really done much of that lately, but I'll keep you guys up to date. I don't know if I'm going to make another video, but um, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.